Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototype is Mystery. This will be part 281R. We are reviewing our last lesson that we started Sunday. We are continuing to review the topic, The Ages End. And this will be part 3R. Now, we want to start on the second page this time, rather than the first page. <clears throat> Point, you will note a number one and a number two. This is a sequence of um, principles we want to present. Oh. Scripture teaches, after the establishment of the church communities, the book of Revelation will be made available. After the establishment of the church communities, in other words, the gathering has now taken place. The Lord has directed on a global scale the saints into their communities, their folds, Jeremiah 23. Then the book of Revelation will be available. Turn to Revelation, the first chapter, verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Bergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Now, the average individual reading this will attribute this instruction to be directed at the churches of John's day. They totally misrepresent what's being said here. <clears throat> In order to understand what's being said here, you have to look at verse 9. I, John, was also who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of Christ and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So John immediately is letting us know he's not giving us a physical rendition of his activities. He's taken out of the physical realm into the spiritual realm. <clears throat> In uh, the literal Greek, interlinear, it says, I came to be in the Spirit on the Lord's day. So everything is coached in a spiritual reality, not a physical reality. The spiritual reality is the key to the spiritual reality of which John is referring to is the Lord's day. He's taken into the future at which he sees Jesus. Jesus instructs him, what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches of this time. So what we find here is the seven churches have to be established first before the book is made available to them. They're going to be taught things from the book from the beginning of sorrows to the point in which they enter the communities. 
in order to prepare them for the things of the book itself. So he's being told by speaking that he's in the spirit, he's told him to withhold the book or give it immediately? No, he's taken into the future at which time the community exists. He says the book that you're going to write sent to this community. Not the community of his time, the community of the day of the Lord, which is the communities of the gathering. Now we find this taking place, Revelation 22. Revelation 22. We're going to dissect verses 18 to 19. Verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. What book? The book that John has just finished writing. He's sending it to the churches as he was instructed. John is still addressing the future, not his time. The future communities are going to have access to this book. Only at the time of the day of the Lord. Because currently there are no church communities in Asia Minor. The churches have to come into existence. Sure. When they come into existence, then the book comes into existence. And then they begin to participate, partake of it. Notice what he says. You can tell by the rest of the scripture that this is in the future. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto the things which are, which shall, the things of God, and shall add unto him, excuse me, try it again. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. <clears throat> when do the plagues take place? At the end of the tribulation period. They can't take place any time before that because they're administered by you and you. Well, you and you and I we haven't glorified yet, so we can't administer the plagues. So you can do what he says you shouldn't do in Revelation misconstrue it, which is what they're doing, but you're not going to suffer the plagues because the plagues won't come into existence until after the prototokers who administer them, administer them. You're going to come under curses and all the rest of it, but it's not the plagues written in this book. And number two, if any man should take away the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. Now this tells us two things. Notice what it says. If Verse 19, if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy. What does he mean take away? He's talking about the individual that is teaching this book. How do you know that he's teaching? Because he is authorized to teach it exactly the way he's heard it. And the way he's heard it is exactly the way it was meant to be understood. Yes. So, take away is the same as leave out. Yes. Yes. So you can, you can, you can read some scripture, you can read part of the scripture and then conclude your message without finishing the scripture because it won't get your desired effect that you've already premeditated. Yes. So the whole thing is, is what a dangerous thing for some, why would, you know, oh gosh, I can't even imagine why anybody would do that except for Satan. Well, Paul, Paul said that people are going to come by to get gatherings for themselves. Mm -hmm. They want authority over people. 
They want to control the uh, the 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 understanding of the scripture. They want to be the sole purveyor of meaning. It's what Lucifer does all the time. They want control so that the person is dependent upon them yes. to give them yes. comprehension of the Word of God. So, does the any man specifically relate to he who has been authorized to distribute or to anybody who claims to be a teacher? No. This is referring to an exalted uh, a person. A Protodicus teacher. Uh, no, not a Protodicus teacher, but notice what it says. What happens? God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Mm -hmm. So number one, he's saved. Okay. And out of the holy city. <clears throat> number two, he is an exalted individual. Because most people are not going to be living in the city, only kings. Prototokias and the <clears throat> martyrs that have risen to greatness are going to be in the city. So this is somebody of great spiritual stature. Prototokias? So, well, mm -hmm. Prototokias, born again, saints who have made uh, heaven, obviously, and you said kings. I understand you to mean Prototokias kings. Yes. Or the kings of the new the new earth. Well, the kings of the new earth are on the outside. They come into the city. So we're not including. So this. we're talking okay. about new covenant. Uh, the 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 panoply of the new covenant positions. Okay. <clears throat> Take them out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Things written in this book. We're talking about the inheritance. Right. There's one group. They're basically, this will come under, that's actually two groups, apostles and prophets. It's basically what it's referring okay. to. Apostles so, and prophets. Now, I want to give you verse 18. When, sorry, when you say the apostles and prophets, you're referring to the elder group, apostles and prophets. Yes. Okay. Yes. Verse 18, note what it says. I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. So the, the pecking order is they're going to hear and they're going to teach what they heard. Because he says, you hear this, you add to it, this, this, and this will happen. You hear this, you take away this, this, and this is going to happen. They're hearing and they're teaching what they heard. Right. Now, what are they hearing it from? It's only one source they could possibly hear it from. That is the angel over the right. church. Okay. Okay. Angel of the church, when the community is established, is going to promulgate the book of Revelation to the apostles and the prophets who will in turn give it to the community. But the apostles and prophets have been hearing it since the beginning of Cyrus, since their own. <laughs> They've only been prepared to hear it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> That's an interesting point. You don't realize, and I keep saying that this book has not been taught. Yes. The, the, the things that we take for granted would choke the average Christian. The difference between YHVH and Halloween. Right. The difference between Genesis 1 and Genesis, Genesis 2. Yes. The human race, yes. other races, yes. the veracity of gods and how they've influenced the whole human race. It's not taught. You're going to have to establish all of that in the mind of a Christian who won't be prepared to hear this because they've been inculcated with organized religious comprehension of the scripture. So should we understand that the period between the beginning of Cyrus and the end of the gathering is for the preparation of the minds of the elders to yes. receive this gospel yes. as of the gathering. And once they get to, to the communities and they get the book gotcha. because they wouldn't understand. Mm. Look, Christians don't understand Revelation now. Why? Because of the way they're taught. You have to demolish that Absolutely. comprehension before you can give them any Absolutely depth of correct. scripture. Yes. yes. In the gathering, mm -hmm. I believe you've taught us this and so I'm going to 
clarify it to make sure I thought I, I heard correctly. When the gathering is gathered, there is going to be a supernatural protection around the gathering to where we're not going to get false teachers in the gathering. Exactly. You will know the ones that are being warned are those who are saved. Born again apostles and prophets. No false teacher can have any, any access to the, the communities at this point. So it's only a time <coughs> of the testing of the communities. Yes, later on, just, just before the rapture. Yeah. Course, that happens just before the rapture. Yes. It doesn't happen, as he says, at any time. It's before part of that. the warning in Revelation, the third chapter, all the past of what you have, right. because this and that, and that, right. and that is going right. to come in right. to try to influence you. Okay. That's unlike what we have now, Mr. Jones. Yep. And that's special. I mean, I mean, I recognize it for what it is, and I'm looking forward to being part of it. Yes. Uh, because I've never experienced a holy gathering the way that's meant and intended. Yes. This again displays the Lord's, the Father's favor in, in such a huge way. I can't even describe it. It doesn't even make sense for me to try. And how to the Father dispenses His wisdom to yeah. the sons. It's amazing, mind-boggling. Mm. The, the Father is not going to allow His Word to be misused and abused the way it has been allowed up to this point. Because up to this point, it's been in the hands of humans. Whether it's Israel in the Old Covenant or whether it's the saints under the New Covenant who Jude and some of the other apostles warned about holding on to the faith they just allowed it to be taken. The Father's not going to allow that to happen. And the person that does do it is going to be dealt with very, very harshly. Mm. But let's go on. So, we've laid this basic foundation. Now, Scripture teaches by the time of the release of the letters to the angels of the churches, everyone who is ready for the rapture will know the fullness of his calling. If he is a king, he will rule the nations. If he is a priest, he will rule as an instructor over the creation. In other words, by the time of this completion, Everybody will know where he stands in the picture, the collage of the plan of God. You'll know if he's an elder, you'll know if he's a priest. You know exactly what's waiting for him when the rapture takes place. There's not going to be any ignorance factor whatsoever. Revelation, the third chapter, verse 11 to 12. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. I'm going to ask a question. What has he got and how did he get it? He was given it in an eternity. Crown and, and, he has a crown. and Jesus gave it to him. No. That doesn't happen until the rapture. The rapture hasn't taken place yet. I'm going to ask a question again. What has he got how did he get it? We just went through it. The Word of God. The book of Revelation gave him all the information that he needed okay. to know. The eternal book of Revelation. Yeah. So he has the book. Well, he has the knowledge of the book. What do we say is in the, contained in the book? His identity, his heritage, his position, 
everything. That's why the Lord is saying you've got it all now. You understand everything. Hold on to what you have been given from the book. So the book which John, in other words, the book which John wrote way back into, then. Yeah, that way, they got right. when they went into the community. That's, that's, the, that's the, it's the inheritance. Yes. 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 They would, outside of that, they would have no clue. Just like Christians today. They don't read the book of Revelation. They, they, they leave it out because they don't understand it. So what do they have? What do they know? Mm. Nothing. And what they do know is a distortion. So, since they have the book, we now understand they have everything. When he's teaching them, what well, he's teaching the apostles and the prophets, I should say, mm -hmm. when he's uh, elevated the yes. start of the churches, yes. will he be teaching them in the same way that we have? I'm really careful how I say this. When we teach our students lessons that we already have, we have outlines, so on and so forth. I'm not saying they've got outlines. I know that they've got the book. Will he be elucidating the understanding that they have, which they see in the book? Will they be asking him questions? I don't understand this part. You know, what, what should I be no. thinking about? No. So they're no, going to have no. understanding and comprehension. Yes. Complete yes. understanding. It's all laid out here. He's going to be doing the same thing that the angel did to John. Okay. Yes. That's okay. how you teach. He's showing them these yeah. things. Yeah, the book, Taking they're going to have the same under, the, the same experiences that John had. Right. <clears throat> He's going to take the prophets and the apostles out of his community. He would probably call them up to the heavens. Do the same thing to them that he did to John. He's speaking. And as he speaks, the images come forth. You're not speaking words, you're speaking concepts. Okay. This is plurality of existence. Yes. So now, there may be a specific student that needs a clarification for something. Somebody else needs a clarification on something else. Do I teach them both simultaneously the same? Or do I take the one to this part of heaven because that's going to give him the visual uh, record of what we're talking, what he's asking about and then I can teach the other one, or, or is it a community th teaching, you know, this is what the lesson is today. No. No. Yeah, give I an example. As being an individual. Revelation 17. Remember, everything is in the spirit. Excuse me, not Revelation. Revelation 21. Verse 9. There came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. <clears throat> You're going to say the same thing to the prophets and apostles. Come up here, I'm going to show you the book of Revelation. So the question has to be, since at that point he is not glorified, He's in the heaven of heavens. He's not glorified. Right. He's not in Ephraim. That's right. That's right. Does duality kick in? He, the question he was asking was, can he teach both of these two let's people continue. at the same time? I see where you're going, but okay. let's continue. I'm trying to answer that question. All right. Verse 10. He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now, Drop down to verse 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. He's talking to John. 
And the words that he's talking of visions that John has of the city. The Spirit is doing the teaching. Not with words, but with concepts. There's not going to be anybody who can't receive. Because he's talking to the person's spirit. And the, the conversation is going to be on a spiritual level designed for exactly what that person can handle what he needs to know. You've just described that um, dream you were telling us about, about how you saw yourself being taught in the same in the same manner. So in other words, we're understanding that the teaching methodology is always from a spiritual and visual perspective. Yes. Yes. Okay. So <coughs> I'm not yet glorified. Yes. Am I immortal? Sure. Okay, I'm immortal. Mm -hmm. Now, being immortal, I have access to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay, because we know that when John was taken to his place, an angel was taking him. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. <coughs> That's where what I'm going to be. Yes. Angelic? Yes. Yes. Okay, and yes. angelic immortal. So I can take him wherever I want to go, and I'm not yet glorified. Yes. I'm just activating in the power of Christ as an as a Remember what the angel tells John. I am your brother. It's not glorified yet. Right. So back to the question, since he's not yet glorified, is he able to do this teaching um, simultaneously? Sure. Okay. Remember, the only difference here is that he's just within the creation. He, he fills the creation. When he gets glorified, he goes beyond the creation to the creator. But we could no longer use the term duality with regards to him in that status at that point because he's no longer existing on the earth, is he? He's existing everywhere. Do you still use the term duality? Sure. Okay. Or, and multiple uh, Plurality. Okay, that's what I'm becoming. <coughs> Perfect. How long will I be teaching my group? You're outside of time. Forever. Mm -hmm. For eternity. You're no longer measuring what you do. So I know I'm time. preparing them for the rapture. So there's a predetermined, unknown, secret time between when I start teaching and then they are now ready for the rapture. No. Okay. You're going to know exactly the events leading to the rapture. You're going to know exactly the lead in. You're going to know as you are known, even though you're not yet glorified. Mm. Okay. Will they be raptured before me, or will I be raptured before them, or will be raptured Same time. Simultaneously, okay. So, are we, we're included in the, those who are alive and remain, gathered together, the second group. No, you're in the first group. You're coming from heaven. The dead in Christ rise first. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a slight... Pre uh, 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 you precede them slightly. Two trumpets. First trumpet, the angels, the dead, glorified. Second trumpet, those that are alive, glorified. He has to do it that way because <clears throat> it's a completion cycle. You leave the earth... You're in the heavens. You are going to come back to be completed first. And those that are on earth get completed secondly. Glorified to the fullness of what they've been designed to be. So, he would come back with those who are dead in Christ? Yeah. You said slightly before. Yeah, Paul says, <clears throat> he talks about, <clears throat> we don't go before the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, we don't precede them. Okay. They come back. Well, Paul didn't realize at the time he's going to be part of the ones that come back. Sure. Ah, that's interesting. Okay. And you get that, of course, in um, Psalms 50th chapter. Uh, it talks about the Lord descends in glory and he speaks to the heavens and he says, Gather my saints who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So he's talking to the angels, he's talking to the dead in Christ. Right. They're going to come back with him for the gathering. This is even before the rapture. Okay. They get rewarded first. They become the teachers, the overseers. And then at the end of that period, everybody gets raptured.
So we're saying everybody will know where he stands. Now, <clears throat> we said <clears throat> that the book of Revelation is basically going to be giving understanding of the positions, kings and priests, and of the inheritance. <clears throat> we talked a little about the, the positions, king and priest. I want to talk a little more about the inheritance. Scripture teaches they will learn of the inheritance waiting for them from the book. Revelation 2, 7. We talked about the tree. I want to talk a little more about the tree. Revelation 2, 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, to him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Two things. In order to have this inheritance, you have to be an overcomer. You have to be Revelation 3, 5. <clears throat> that means you'll be able to eat, this is what the scripture is saying, the fruit of the tree. Now, turn back to Revelation 22. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So this is referring to having fruit. It's referring to being obedient to the word of God. Uh, excuse me, not so much fruit, but it's talking about good works, that sort of thing. It's not referring to an exalted position. It's referring to being obedient to what God has given them to do in this life. Yeah. I understand you to mean good works in the manner of gold, silver, precious stones. Uh, because how would, would a stubble fit into this? No, not in that sense. It's talking about Living a righteous life, put it this way, living a righteous life of faith, okay. which is obedience in that respect. That's what they're referring to. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. This is nothing about eating the fruit. It's talking about the people on the outside, the those that are there who have only faith. Mm -hmm. They have access to the tree <coughs> for the leaves, but they do not inherit the tree, which is the Prototokis sons. <coughs> so what we're looking at is the differences of the inheritance. Those <coughs> on a high level and those on the lowest level. A great differentiation. So, Mr. Jones, we know there's a couple different ways that the fruit of the tree of life is disseminated. Mm -hmm. One is you may go up and pick. Mm -hmm. Another one is the father chooses which one 
he wants you to, to try. The Father gives you from the tree of life. Where is it? We just read scripture or so ago. You you're referring to uh, verse fourteen? Or are you talking about Revelation uh, the first one that we read? I think the first Revelation one. Revelation two two? I don't remember. Two set let's turn to it because that's the only one I see where it refers to the tree. Revelation two I did notice seven. that the Lord has chosen the fruit. Well, let's see. Verse 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the okay. paradise of God. See, I misunderstood mm. what was being said there. Mm. When he's going to give them, you know... He's, he's giving them their inheritance. The access. Well, okay. Yeah. He's not picking the fruit. He's giving them the access. Right. Okay. All right. So, I mis misread. No, prob no problem. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad I asked too. <laughs> That's one more thing that I only have to hear about a thousand more times. <laughs> so we said, and finally turn to Revelation 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his guide, and he shall be my son. You have a joint inheritance of all that the Father has. Everybody has a participation in everything. Define everybody. Every single person who's a born again Christian. No, okay. no, the overcomer here. So who's the overcomer in this instance? The overcomer is basically the prototokis. He's the only one those that make, qualifies. Those who make the rapture, right. Yeah, okay. he's the only one that qualifies for it. In that respect, I right, want no, to. Hang on, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We understand that those who make the rapture are going to be mostly, if not almost exclusively, prototokis. We, we, we get that. But we also understand that there will be a tiny fraction, tiny fraction, of those who are not prototokis, even to the degree that there may be one or two peoples of the saints. Since mm -hmm. they make the rapture, are they considered overcomers? And if so, what do they get? Everything. So then they also participate in the everything. Sure. Mm. Paul talks about in Romans 8, we shall all be glorified together. Interesting. So everybody shares in all things that makes the rapture. Well, I wanted to... Go on. Go ahead. Scripture says, My Father hath given me a kingdom, and I do... My father does. I'm gonna give you a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Are the the people, the saints, that just barely make the rapture, gonna have a kingdom? No. But the people of saints do have a kingdom. They have what their patrons give them. Right. Okay. Well, the father. Yeah. Okay. I know. I know what you mean. What I wanted to bring out is this. Since we know that the angels have a joint inheritance, which is all things. And the kings have a joint inheritance, which is a kingdom and a domain. In other words, not all things. Well, the elders, they, they have to. That's what I'm talking about, the elders. Yeah, they have to participate in all things also. But from the perspective of an elder. And not that of Not the perspective of an angel. Okay. So, when we say all things for the elders, are, are we talking about unified, as in all together they all collectively have a kingdom? Or do they each have a slice? He has his own kingdom. Right. That's why he's wearing a crown. Okay. But the elder group participates in all things just like the angels participate in all things. They okay. have to because each one is a adopted son. Right. Is that all things description true of those who are not protodicus but make the rapture? No. Okay. Uh, so that's what, what I'm trying to do is to find out the difference between all of those different groups that make the rapture as to what they're going to get. Well... <coughs> Everybody that makes the rapture is adopted. If you're adopted, you inherit all, all th okay, things. Okay, okay. But at <coughs> certain levels, in other words. 
And it, from a certain perspective of what your calling is, okay. you're going to participate in all things, either from an elder perspective mm -hmm. or from a priest perspective. Mm -hmm. And in that way, the Father does things uniquely. He's going to enable everybody to be a joint heir with the only begotten Son, but his his function is unique in his calling. That's where your inheritance comes from, from your calling. Excuse me. And in that respect, that's why it's so important to comprehend the book of Revelation. Now I'm going to give you an example of this inheritance. Turn to John, 16th chapter. Briefly touched on this Sunday. Verse 15. John 16, verse 15. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he the Holy Spirit shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So the Holy Spirit will show you all things. Why? Because God the Father wants you to know what you're going to inherit in Christ. He doesn't want you ignorant of it. He's not interested in you living ignorantly and then depending on Him to give you something when you get in front of Him, enlighten you what you've gotten. He expects us to prepare for what He's given us right. this right. side of yes. the Jordan. Right. Now, the Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit will give you will give you understanding. He's going to show you. The word show there. Throughout the book of Revelation, the angel shows John the whole panoply of the book of Revelation. How? Through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit takes it and He shows John the Holy City, New Jerusalem, he shows John the uh, the harlot city. He shows John the events taking place in the tribulation period. That's what he does. He shows all things. He's going to show the prototokis their inheritance starting in this life. But the prototokis have to be open to receive what the Holy Spirit is going to show them. Human nature will prevent that from happening. But if you yield to what the Holy Spirit wants to do in you, you begin to understand what it means to be an inheritor of all things. I'll give you one example. 2 Corinthians 12th chapter. Verse 1 to 4. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man of Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up, caught up to the third heaven. Who catches up, saints? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. What is Paul saying here? He's giving you a demonstration of what Jesus is talking about in John 16, 15. The Holy Spirit will literally take you and into eternity and show you your inheritance. Paul's going to inherit the third heaven. The Holy Spirit is preparing him to see the panorama of what the Father has for him. Turn to 1 Corinthians 
second chapter. Verse 9 to 10. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, it have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. What has he prepared? The inheritance. But God hath revealed them unto us by spirit. For spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. How is Paul saying this? Because he went up to the third heaven. He understands what Jesus is talking about in John in the 16th chapter. The Holy Spirit will take you and he'll show you what God has prepared for you. But, organized religion can't teach this because it doesn't understand it. Organized religion only gives you the things of earth. It can't give you the things of heaven because they don't understand the things of heaven. Yes. Do you think Paul sees what we're going through right here, right now? Sure. Okay, so, will he also be amazed at what we're finding out that he was never taught? No, because he already knows it. Mm. Okay, so now he knows it. Sure. Okay. If he's an angel of the church, he's got access to the book of Revelation. Okay. He knows more than we do. Does he receive it all at one time, or does he actually need to learn? No. He'll receive it and understand it instantaneously. Okay. He knows as he has known. I, well, I mean, everything. Yeah, well, he's not omniscient yet, because he hasn't been glorified. Right. But he's at a level in which he's at a teacher material. Mm -hmm. So he's learning so he can teach those in the heavens at the time of the gathering. But you say he knows more than we do. A lot more. Because we haven't yet reached the point at which we He's can. in a position we can't approach at this point. So what we find here, when the beginning of sorrows commences, what the Father's going to do is going to demolish the pseudo-reality so the truth can go forth to those that have ears to hear. Mm. The things that people have been taught and understood by organized religion is going to demolish. It can't stand because it's hindering the whole counsel of God. Okay. The, I'm thinking about the angels over the churches. At the point that they are elevated, they will know as they are known. To a great degree, more or less, okay. yes. We're still talking about before the, the, the rapture. Mm -hmm. Will that star know what Paul knows, since they're both in heaven and heavens. Sure. Will he know more or less or the same? Well, who know more or less? The star who's just been elevated. They'll all know equally. Okay. This is one body, unified, so everybody will know what everybody else knows. In other words, the angels are one body. So it's at that point that the, the angel over the churches is unified with the other angels. See, when are you going to tell us that? We've got to wrestle that out. <laughs> Well, when you say unified with the other angels... Well, I'm thinking about the voice. I know that happens after the glorification, but at what point do the angels unify to become one voice? At the, at the glorification. Okay. Is there some preparationary period which they go through prior to the, the glorification, but while still in the heaven of heavens? No. Because right. while they're in the heaven of heavens, they're teaching. We, they've made it when they get to that point. They're into their inheritance, doing what they've been called to do to the fullest outside of the glorification. Gotcha. Okay. Now the distinction, of course, comes at the glorification, because some are going to be pillar angels, some are going to be temple angels, right. and uh, you're going to have a hierarchy of uh, levels being taught. 
I believe the distinction there lies in basically what God created the individual to be. Since the star of the church is, is in the heaven of heavens prior to the glorification, can that star encounter his heavenly counterpart? Sure. Interesting. Sure, there's no reason for separation. So the two, the two can come to get, they're not merged because the glorification hasn't happened yet, but the two can come together and dialogue sure. or whatever. Sure, there's no reason for any separation That's other than the glorification. Yes. Will there be any kind of, any manner of, of being where the stars, the saints, the Prototokos, they're in their positions. We're starting at, we're all in our com completed positions. And we're running the creation. We're, we're, we're dealing with the ins and outs of running the creation. Is there any way for a son to make a sacrifice unto the Lord, unto, unto the Father? Your life is a continued sacrifice. So it's a perpetual thing that just, yeah. Okay. So you could say then that at the glorification of the rapture, the father sees the overcomer as the perpetual sacrifice that you're referring to. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah. I guess it has to be true because every member of the Church of the Firstborn is doing, to a slightly small degree, or a whole lot small degree what Christ has done sure so they have to follow in his footsteps exactly mm. exactly and the father sees that as a series of sacrifices which gives him great pleasure praise the Lord amen it gives the person who's doing the sacrifice great pleasure so it's a win-win situation yes uh, you're not going to hear any moaning and groaning and complaining <laughs> and that, that question was for somebody in this room because it just shot through me and said hey, you're going to you're going to be laughed at. Oh, okay, well, so I asked it anyway, and it ends up being a, a, a valid question, an interesting answer to the question. Praise the Lord. Amen. We might still laugh at you, but, you know. We might what? We might still laugh, but not quite now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might even laugh at that. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. This is stunning, Richard. We're, we're you know, in areas which we could not have comprehended prior to those. My suggestion is this to all that are listening. Develop a desire to find out what your inheritance is. Mm. Pray to the Lord that as you read scripture and you hear the word, the Lord will give you as an individual an understanding comprehension of what he created you to be from an eternal perspective. Yeah, you know, there's a very simplistic answer. You say you had to inherit everything, okay? But to have that question answered the way it would meant to be answered, I'm okay. Say, Father, let me understand the creation that I've inherited. Mm -hmm. Let me understand the bits and pieces, the ins and outs, you know, the length, the the breadth, the height, the width, the color, the smell. I mean, literally. It opens up a, a vast, you know, panorama. Chasm. But I think it also takes you off the earth if that was, you know, your ultimate desire to get off the earth, focus on the things in heaven and not on the earth. That would be a good way to do it. When I was, I think, 12 years old, it would be about three years before I actually got saved, I had a, a star atlas, constellations, <coughs> pictures of uh, nova, supernova, nebula. I laid it down on the table, and I sent it to the table, and I prayed. I said, Father, I want to know about all of this. I want to know what it's all about. And <clears throat> shortly after that, I started to have dreams and visions and things. And that was 60 years 
ago. It just began to scratch the surface of what there is. So ask the Father. He'll give you understanding. Now the enemy will try to fight you tooth, tooth and claw. One way he does that is through the carnal. To keep your mind closed to what your spirit is wanting to receive. This is across the board. That's why when you talk to Christians, they are so darn intransigent <clears throat> about not wanting to learn anything new. And you can see why it is. <clears throat> They're acquiescing to the Luciferian reality that's shutting down their progression in the spiritual and giving them a false sense of accomplishing, accomplishing something in the physical, which is just an illusion. Describe to us <coughs> Grand Central Station. Ah, 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 the, uh, the, the painting. What is it that they're looking at? Sorry. It's a, a map of the stars. Yeah, and I, yeah it is. All the constellations. Yeah, and there's some gods that are Picture flitting around and, or whatever, but yes, it gives you a you know a, a, it's 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 brief, but it does get you off of the earth. You're looking at, mm. at uh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you ever get a picture? A uh, look at those pictures on the Sistine Chapel and mm -hmm. some of the 16th, 15th century pictures that they got from the Bible. Their interpretation <laughs> of angels and life in the heavens. Angels as babies, yes. With diapers, with little diapers. wings. I thought you meant the uh, Union Station scene from The Men in Black. Because <laughs> a whole different story. Praise the Lord. I recommend Lord. every single person watch that Union Station scene in Men in Black. You'll know what we're talking about. Yes. Experiences. Now, when you say angels, we're talking about the prototokis. Pillar angels, temple angels, not the messenger angels that are I'm not talking about I'm thinking about high like cherubim seraphim yes. no, no, no 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 the, the inheritance is not to the them it's to the prototokis okay all right thank you for that the, let me pick up on YHVH having access to it for a particular period of time mm -hmm. does he continue to have access to it after the glorification no okay no the only ones, because it's, an, a matter of fact, I got uh, some scripture to differentiate that for this lesson tonight. No. One man of fruit each month for 12 months. Oh. Oh, okay. okay. That's interesting. So now when Mariko asks, can you take more than one? You can take all you want. So now, I don't see us doing that. You know, it, it's, it's like a hoarding. It's a human thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, but my response was, if you wanted to, yeah, you could exactly. So we're not going to want to. 